Robert Carter III was one of the wealthiest and most influential men of his time, known for his vast land holdings and ownership of hundreds of slaves. But what sets him apart is a decision that defied societal norms and shook the foundations of slavery in the American South. In this video, we'll explore Robert Carter III's life, his transformation from the largest slave owner of his time to a vocal critic of slavery, and his groundbreaking document known as The Deed of Gift, which outlined his plan for the gradual emancipation of his slaves. What's your name? Robert Carter III, 1728 to 1804, was a prominent figure in colonial Virginia and a wealthy planter, lawyer, and politician. He is best known for his large-scale slave ownership and his actions to gradually emancipate his slaves, a process known as the Deed of Gift. Carter was born in 1728 in Lancaster County, Virginia, into a wealthy and influential family. His father, Robert Carter II, was a prominent planter and landowner. Carter inherited significant wealth and land from his father, becoming one of the wealthiest men in Virginia during his lifetime. Carter served as a member of the Virginia House of Burgesses, the colonial legislative body, and later as a delegate to the Continental Congress. He was known for his moderate stance on issues related to American independence and was known to have been sympathetic to the grievances of the American colonies against British rule. However, Carter is perhaps best known for his stance on slavery. In the 1790s, Carter underwent a change of heart and became troubled by the morality of slave ownership. In 1791, he drafted a document called The Deed of Gift, which provided for the gradual emancipation of his slaves. Carter implemented this plan on his plantations in Virginia, and by 1800, he had freed nearly 500 slaves, making him one of the largest slaveholders to have ever voluntarily emancipated his slaves. Carter's actions were significant in the context of his time, as they represented a rare example of a slave owner in the American South who took steps toward emancipation. However, it's important to note that Carter's actions were not without controversy, and he faced criticism from both abolitionists and fellow slave owners. Carter's emancipation plan was also not without limitations, as it did not grant immediate or full emancipation to all of his slaves, and some remained enslaved for several years after the deed of gift was enacted. Robert Carter III's change of heart regarding slavery and his decision to take steps toward emancipation, as reflected in his deed of gift, which provided for the gradual emancipation of his slaves, is not definitively documented in historical records. The exact reasons for his change of stance on slavery are not widely known and may be subject to speculation and interpretation. However, some historians and scholars have proposed several possible factors that may have influenced Robert Carter III's decision to change his mind on slavery. Moral and Ethical Concerns It is possible that Carter, like many others during the 18th and 19th centuries, began to question the morality and ethics of slave ownership. Influenced by Enlightenment ideals and moral principles, Carter may have come to believe that slavery was inconsistent with his values and principles. Religious Beliefs Carter was a devout Christian, and it is suggested that his religious convictions may have played a role in his changing views on slavery. Christianity, particularly certain interpretations of the Bible, emphasized principles of equality, compassion, and social justice, which could have led Carter to question the morality of owning slaves. Enlightenment Ideals The Enlightenment, a philosophical and intellectual movement of the 18th century, advocated for principles such as individual rights, freedom, and equality. Carter may have been influenced by these Enlightenment ideals and come to believe that slavery was incompatible with these principles. Economic Considerations Some historians speculate that Carter's decision to gradually emancipate his slaves may have been influenced by economic considerations. Changing economic conditions, including declining tobacco prices, and the challenges of managing large numbers of slaves may have led Carter to reconsider the profitability and sustainability of slave labor on his plantations. The Deed of Gift refers to a document drafted by Robert Carter III in 1791, which outlined his plan for the gradual emancipation of his slaves. Here is a summary of the key points of the Deed of Gift. Gradual Emancipation Carter's plan stipulated that his slaves would be freed gradually over time with younger slaves being freed earlier and older slaves being provided for in their old age. 
The exact timeline for emancipation was not specified in the deed of gift, but it was implemented on Carter's plantations in Virginia. Conditions for Emancipation Carter's plan outlined specific conditions that slaves had to meet in order to be eligible for emancipation, such as displaying good behavior, being of a certain age, and completing a period of apprenticeship or work for Carter. Provision for Elderly Slaves Carter's plan made provisions for elderly slaves who were unable to work due to age or infirmity. These slaves would be cared for and supported by Carter and his family for the remainder of their lives. Inheritance of Land the deed of gift also specified that Carter's land would be inherited by his heirs and would not be sold to pay for the support of the emancipated slaves. This was meant to ensure that the freed slaves would have a place to live and work after their emancipation. Limitations The deed of gift did not grant immediate or full emancipation to all of Carter's slaves, and some slaves remained enslaved for several years after the plan was enacted. The plan also did not extend to slaves that Carter may have acquired in the future, or to slaves owned by his wife or children. Legally binding, the deed of gift was a legally binding document, and Carter took steps to ensure that it would be legally upheld, including registering it with the Virginia courts. Robert Carter III died on March 7, 1804. The exact cause of his death is not widely documented, and historical records do not provide conclusive information on the specifics of his death. And his legacy as a Virginia planter who took steps toward emancipation continues to be a topic of historical interest and debate. His story serves as a reminder of the complexities and contradictions surrounding the institution of slavery in American history. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.